Hi guys and welcome to International Trade Part 2 and in this video we're going to look at implementing a tariff in general equilibrium. Firstly, I do want to apologize for the change in theme from episode one. Uh, the main reason for that is that the diagram coming up does get quite complicated and it's quite hard to see that diagram in the green background that I used to have. Okay, so we're going to assume the same things as before, that we have first best conditions, which is perfect substitution between goods from abroad and goods domestically, that we also have perfect competition, so we're not looking at monopolies or brand competition, and that we also have no externalities, which is a simplifying assumption. Again, those were explained in the last uh, episode in the series. And secondly, we're going to assume that it's a small country. The reason for this is so that they do not influence the world price. Before we get going in this tutorial, please like my Facebook page, like this video, and comment if it helped you in any sort of way, or if you follow the channel, it would be great to hear from you guys. Okay, so we have a PPF here. A PPF stands for the Production Possibility Frontier. And all this shows us is that the maximum output capacity of the economy, and if you're on the PPF along this line here, if you're on that line, that shows that you're perfect efficiency in the economy. Now, in practice, you're never usually going to be on this PPF, but it's an indicator or a broad indicator of what your economy can produce. Okay, so the PPF is the green semicircle here. The red line shows us the relative prices between our two goods in our economy. We're focusing on just two goods, food and manufacturers. Okay, and from our microeconomics courses, we know that when a curve is tangential to the budget constraint, we're going to call relative price levels a budget constraint, so just call it BC. When the curve is tangential to it, we know that we have an equilibrium. In this diagram, we can see two equilibriums. We can see an equilibrium here, and we can see an equilibrium here. So PPF tells us production. Whereas utility curves, utility, tend to tell us about consumers and what they consume. So at Q star, let's drag that down. Let's say that we have S1. So our economy is supplying S1 manufacturers. But what about consumption? Well, let's drag down consumption and let's call that D1. So we're demanding D1, but we're only supplying S1. So that is what we call imports, because we're demanding more than we're supplying. So we're importing manufacturers. Let's see what happens to food. So we drag food across. We're going to call that Q1. And we're going to drag Q star across. I'm going to call that Q2. Well, here we're supplying Q2 and we're only demanding Q1. So here we're actually going to export that. Okay, so we want to apply a tariff on our imports. And we're going to apply a tariff on the things where we have the most imports. And we have the most imports for manufacturers. So let's just write up here, just for reference, apply tariff to, and I'll put M for manufacturers. So we're going to apply a tariff of M to manufacturers. A tariff of T units. So what happens? Okay, so the implementation of a tariff of T units on manufacturers has now pivoted our relative price level to the right. Why is that? Well, one way you can look at it is through comparing how much food you get relative to manufacturers. Now, you get much less manufacturers for each unit of food because manufacturers have increased in price. Whereas before, a one unit increase in food would result in quite a large increase in the amount of manufacturers that you get. How has this influenced the economy? Well, we used to be producing S1 level of manufacturers. We now produce S2 levels of manufacturers. So manufacturing has increased. However, the supply of food or the production of food has 
decreased from this level to here. Okay, so the diagram gets a little bit more complicated now, but I think it makes a lot of sense if we actually look at what these two different relative prices actually represent. This relative price here is focused on consumers, whereas this relative price here is focused on producers. Okay, so why is this relative price focused on consumers? This all links back to this assumption here that we're a small country. Small countries can affect the price for which their consumers in their domestic market can charge because they can implement tariffs at the border. But they can't influence producer prices in the world market because they're small and they don't have much purchasing power. This is why we see the two different income levels and the two different relative price levels in our economy. So then we see a shift or a decrease in our income levels. Why is that? Well, we see this because we're shifting our production to less efficient producers. So in the free trade equilibrium we were producing here, but when we introduce a tariff, we're now producing here. But this is less efficient and it's all it's been induced by that tariff. Okay, so therefore we have this shift downwards in the income level. So that makes a lot of sense. And this utility curve here therefore shifts down to reflect this reduction in the income level. And we also see the relative prices or the income level of the consumers consumers increasing in our economy. And the reason for this is that we assume that the government reimburses the consumer for this loss. So therefore, we get to this point here where the income level for the consumer crosses the income level of the producer and we get this new utility curve here. When these two curves meet, we have something that's called a balanced trade equilibrium. And as we can see, the tariff has led to a reduction from utility levels here to utility levels at C2, and therefore a tariff has reduced welfare in the economy. And this agrees with the analysis in the partial equilibrium. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please like the video, comment down below if it's helped you in any way. Have any more questions, please send me a question on Facebook, on my Facebook page, Economics Alex, I'd be happy to help. Cheers.